in the last video, we worked on the idea that you have different variables. You have temperature, volume, pressure, and moles that all affect the behavior of a gas. If you heat up a gas, its volume is going to increase. So basically, on a hot day, a balloon swells up, and on a cold day, the balloon shrinks down. Pretty intuitive. You already understand that. Okay. We also know that if you put more air in that balloon, it's going to swell up and become a bigger volume. But if you let air out of the balloon, you're going to get a smaller volume. Okay. We know that if you have, instead of a balloon, you have a rigid canister, that if you heat up the gas inside the canister, you're going to get more pressure because it would expand if it could, but it can't expand because it's got a rigid container. So the pressure builds up. And if you cool it off, the pressure goes down. We use a tire for an example in the wintertime. You, uh, you lose tire pressure because cold air has less pressure than hot air. So you have to fill up more moles of air to bring your pressure back up. And then finally, you've got volume and pressure, which is why I have the syringe. I've got a certain volume of air in here. If I cover up the ends so that air cannot escape, if I make the volume smaller, pressure builds up. I'm having to push against that plunger to keep it there because smaller volume makes a higher pressure. Okay. On the other hand, if I pull the plunger out, it eventually becomes difficult to pull out because the volume has gotten bigger, the pressure has gotten smaller, and I'm fighting against that, that vacuum. So um, we have, these are things you understand. These are things you know intuitively. You know that if you take a balloon and squeeze it, it's going to start to get difficult because you're going to build up pressure. You know that if you heat up a gas, it's going to expand. You've heard that since you were a little kid. Now, what I've done is I've taken these and made it a little bit smaller and put them into, moved them over so we got some more board space here. It's the same things we just did. All of these things have names. We don't care about the names. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Avogadro, and congratulations, Mr. Gay-Lussac. Okay? Those things don't matter. What matters is more air more volume. Less air takes up less space. And there's an equation to resolve that. Okay, Heat it up, it expands. Cool it off, it contracts. Yeah, we got an equation for that, but don't let that equation get in the way of what you already know. You heat up a gas, it expands. Okay, You heat up a, a rigid container, the pressure inside is going to build up. Hot temperatures, high pressures. Colder temperatures, low pressures. Yeah, we have an equation, but the equation is not our biggest issue. Our big, big issue is what happens with the gas. And then finally, this one okay, is the only inverse proportion out of the deal. It's an inverse proportion because when one rises, the other falls. If you make the volume bigger in the syringe, the pressure is going to drop. If you make the volume smaller, you're going to build pressure up. Okay, more gas in less space you're going to get more pressure. Okay, so what do we have from that? Well, we've got to be able to do calculations. And when we do calculations, we want to be able to list the information given. We want to be able to take the uh, equation and rearrange it algebraically to isolate the variable. Then we substitute the data given. We include our units because cancellation will be a double check for ourselves. And, of course, if the temperature is involved, we have to use Kelvin, and to get Kelvin, we've got to add 273. And then we do the math, okay? List your given, okay? Isolate your variable, substitute your data, solve your problem. Now, here's an example. Now, I've got here a gas occupies a half a liter, 0 0.50 liters, at zero Celsius, what volume will it occupy at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, this liters is volume and Celsius is temperature. So I'm looking for volume and temperature here. And it doesn't matter whose law it is, but if I'm doing volume and temperature, I'm doing this. So I'm going to move this out to, the, well, actually I'll move it down. And I'm going to write up at the top here, I got T1V2 equals T2V1. That's got to be given to you. I write the equation down. So now I have my T1, my V1, my T2, and my V2. Okay, so let's reread the problem because I'm going to list the information given. And if I list the information given, then I turn it 
into a much simpler problem for myself. It takes me another 30 seconds, but 30 seconds of my life to make sure I get it right is a pretty good investment in time. Gas occupies a 0 0.50 liters. Well, 0 point, point, point 0.50 liters is the volume. So I put 0 0.50 liters as my volume. The question says, what volume will it occupy? Well, so that gets a little question mark there. That's going to be what I'm trying to solve for. Okay. And actually, I'm going to make that box a little bit bigger. Because eventually, there's going to be an answer in there. Okay. It's 0 0.50 liters at zero Celsius. Well, let's see. Zero degrees Celsius plus 273 is 273 Kelvin. So my original temperature, I'm going to put 273 Kelvin. Okay. And now that I've done that, I don't need my scratch work. Okay. What volume will it occupy at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 293 Kelvin. So my T2, I'm going to put 293 Kelvin. And then I can get rid of my scratch work. And now that I've done that, I don't really need this anymore. I can take it and put it off to the side, and I know it's there, but if I need to refer to it, I will. But I've got all the information I need. And now I'm going to take that. I'll switch colors here for you. I want to solve for V2. Well, here's V2 in the equation. V2, to isolate it, well, T2 and V1 are already on the other side. But if I want to get T1 away from the left and over to the right, I have to divide both sides by T1. It'll cancel on the left, and my T1 will now be over on the right. And now my variable is isolated. I have to do that. I have to do that. Now, if I don't do that, and I just try and do it in my calculator, I run the risk of making mistakes. Now, before I continue, I want to say this, because this is a very important piece of the puzzle. You already know what's going to happen. You know that 293 Kelvin is hotter than 273 Kelvin. And if 293 Kelvin is hotter than 273 Kelvin, if my gas is going to heat up, what's the gas going to do? Is it going to expand or contract? It's going to expand. Oh, well, if the gas is going to expand, then in the end, my volume is going to have to be bigger than a half a liter. Okay, if I take this gas and heat it up, it's going to become bigger than it was before. It's going to expand. The molecules are going to spread out. So now what do I do? Well, let's see. I take my variables right out of my given. T2 is 293 Kelvin. Okay. V1 is point, make sure I've got space here, 50 liters. Okay. My T1 was 273 Kelvin. And I put the two Kelvins directly over each other so I can see the units and the cancellation is right out there in front of me. Okay. And when I do my math, what do I get? Let's see. Pull up the calculator here. And make sure I got it clear. 293 Kelvin times 0 0.50 liters times 0 0.50 liters. And I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 273. So divided by 273 Kelvin equals 0.53. Six six three, and so on. And the only unit that's left is liters. So I've got a couple of double checks here. One of the double checks is I was careful about writing my information that was given. Another double check was I isolated my variable and didn't read it straight out of there. I took it off of my data table here. I double checked against my equation. I substituted and lined them up so that I could see that things were in the right place. I double checked my units to make sure they canceled. I double checked my units and my answer to make sure that it's a volume unit. I wanted volume. I ended up with volume. And now my final double check is this. I knew that my temperature was going to get hotter, so my volume was going to get bigger. 
and my answer, 0.53, is in fact bigger than my starting volume of 0 0.50. Now my question becomes, where do I round off? That's two significant digits. There's my two significant digits. The next digit is a six, so it rounds up. So I would call it 0.54 liters. And because I've done this in a thorough and systematic way, and because I have um, used my double check of using my common sense and my intuition to predict what my answer was going to look like before I started and double checking to make sure that my answer was what I expected it to be when I was done, that gave me an opportunity to be very, very confident that I did my problem correctly.